G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I'm in a bit of a pickle, I guess. I don't have much power for my mining vehicle and that means I'm not gonna have much in the way of resources to do things with. Let's just check, ow, I forgot that jumping was bad. Let's just check how much there is in the assembler before I get too doom and gloomy. Yeah, I've got a thousand iron, which might get me a couple of blocks around this base built, but not terribly much. And if I'm going to be struggling for power for a little while, I suspect it might be time for me to add a few things that I can do around here, even while I'm waiting for the power to accumulate in things like the battery here. A suggestion that I was given that I quite like was to put a solar tower on two my survival kit to ensure that I don't have to worry about the power here and we've got three hours of power remaining on this one. I think it should be relatively easy to build a smallish solar tower that if I put the tracking script on should produce enough power to keep this thing running almost forever. It may even get to a point where this battery is fully charged and if it gets to that point I can convert this battery into a new small grid vehicle. The other thing I was thinking of doing today, and we'll see how well my plan around this one works out, was to set up a bit of a mine up against the mountain relatively nearby. Something that I can do both hand and machine mining at. The idea of that being that if I am struggling for power on board the little goofy truck here, then I can at least do some hand mining of stone to collect some resources to keep things ticking along while I'm waiting for it to get charged up. I was also talking last time about building a connector somewhere on the base and that is relatively high on the priorities too, or at least some sort of hookup for the goofy miner. And speaking of that, let's build the solar tower first. I might not get it done in before night time though, which could be problematic. But I'm thinking if I can get it done first and see that I've got enough power coming from it, then we should be good to perhaps even hook this back up to the survival kit and charge off that instead of the base. Since the main battery is on the miner at the front, not on this trailer, I can just detach it and hook it up over here which would save me the effort of having to build a connector when I'm still not 100% sure where I want that to be. Now, I've got a few steel plates in my inventory, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a bit of a ramp up the side here. I was thinking stairs, but I might go ramp because it'll be cheaper. Basically, I want to be able to get on top of this a little bit more easily. In fact, yeah. Oh, wait, hang on a sec. Hang on. Something I always seem to forget is that ladders do have a small grid ver version. So I can stick a ladder on here and that'll get me up the top. That is not terribly cheap, but it's also not terribly expensive. I might just put it square on the side of the cargo container for now. So I need to get a few things made. In fact, do I have all that already? Minus the construction components, it's okay. So I just need seven construction components. Oh. Ah, <laughs> I also added a HUD mod that I was sent by Norka. Uh, it's specifically made for this scenario. So the warnings that you see up the top middle of the screen that flash are tweaked to fit with what this scenario is. So it's not something that will work in a general sense. Having an O2 warning when your O2 from your suit is at 75%, not really practical for most uses, but for what I'm doing here is incredibly handy. And we want seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So, da, da, da. Yeah, perfect. And now for where shall I put this solar tower? Probably shouldn't think about this too much. Let's just start here. That's off the survival kit, which is actually the smartest way to do this. Now that I have thought of it a little bit more. If I do it off the survival kit, that means it's the bit that's always going to have the direct link to power. So then we just need to have a rotor this way. I'm going to need to find a way to get higher up. Two blocks out here if I can jump up onto those. Oh yeah, 
I can jump over it, so I should be able to jump on it. There we go. Uh, then we need a rotor off each side, and then I should be able to get a solar panel that would spin relatively freely, or maybe I need to go a little bit higher, actually. I've put that in the wrong spot. Oh wait, no. I can do this. If I put a half block there instead, let's start organizing my hot bars the way I normally do. If I put a half block here, I should be able to jump up onto that. There we go. And now I've made that more difficult for myself because the rock is spinning. Should have locked it. And let's go. Yeah, that should be as tall as I need. Ow! Uh, yeah. Then I get rid of these two. Uh, that one might actually be able to stay, but we'll get rid of it anyway. And I should be able to weld the rest of this up. If I keep the rotors not programmed yet, I should be able to uh, position them so that I can weld everything up as I go. Cool. Let's get this stuff in the build planner and see how much other material we're going to need to get this up and running. Production. Okay, we got enough material for everything. Because solar panels on small grid are very cheap. Ah, oh, no, I hate it when I do that. Put the steel tubes into the rotor parts. Ugh, it's so wasteful. Right, you've got to be locked. This is making my life too hard. It was fun at the beginning, but it's no longer fun to keep chasing this thing around. Especially as I'm jumping. Ow! Ah, this is not a safe working environment. <laughs> It is not safe at all. Uh, getting ejected off the thing. Alright, let's get back over here. And production. I Well, first let's make a couple of small steel tubes that I need. And then... Small blocks. We've got solar panels. There we go. One, two, three. Let's just get all that made. Kind of glad I went to the height that I did with this, because... Uh, if I... Ah... Uh, Oh man, I'm kind of glad I went to the height that I did with this because I've just barely got enough clearance as it turns out. If I'd gone any shorter it would have been a bit of a problem I think. I need to stand on top of the detector. It doesn't want to let me. There we go. There we go. Rotor is on. Now rotor. I want rotor lock off and I want you to spin around so I can put this solar panel on the other side. Maybe that'll be a good position. So I'm thinking four panels, two on each side like this, will hopefully give us enough power for that thing to stay up and running. Uh, production, I need a small grid rotor. And I'm gonna get this finished just as the sun goes down. Yay! I wonder if I'm getting absolutely zero from these at the moment. Oh no, one of them's got a green light. Yeah. I'm really terrible at telling when this is vertical from this angle. Solar panel. Getting 4.88 kilowatts. Woohoo! Killing it! And it is saying I am still depleted in three hours. I didn't expect this to quite work at this time of day. I just figured it was better to get this built before something else since tomorrow, given the time I've got remaining on that power, Tomorrow I will run out of power. So I need to ensure that my materials get spent on stuff that's going to keep my survival kit going. So there you go. O2 warning. So that I don't get distracted and die. Almost seems unfair. It's making it too easy for me to not die. <laughs> I guess dying from me just not paying attention is one of the least dramatic ways for me to die. Dying from me not preparing adequately, that's going to be a bit more exciting. Like if I go on a little bit of a trip and forget to bring enough material. There we go. We have our panels. Now, I need to get a programmable block and set up easy solar alignment script. Where shall I put this? Programmable block in here. I don't know what was going on there. I could have sworn I got those to be produced. Maybe there was something else in my G menu that I didn't realize. And... There we go. 
Rotor. Er. Which rotors are they? Um, it's going to be one of these. So it's that one. Let's rename it. Solar rotor. Vertical. And then I'm going to guess it's these two. No, there's a share inertia tensor, which I did not do. It's going to be that one and that one. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Just to confirm, yep. And to confirm, yep. And I'm just right clicking on the velocity slider to set it back to zero. If you right click on something, it either will reset it to default or to zero. If you right click on a slider, which can be a handy little thing to remember. Solar rotor H1 and solar rotor H2. I'm just doing this for my own benefits. For the script, I don't need to name these this way. All I need to do for the script is call these solar rotors as a group and hit save. Now, when I go back to the programmable block and go to edit, browse scripts. And if you don't have an edit button on your programmable block, that's probably because you're either not in experimental mode or you don't have in-game scripts enabled for your save. So we want Izzy's. And got a lot of easy solar alignment. Here we go. Copy to editor. So there we go. Group name should be solar rotors. Then, no, I don't want gyro mode. Actually, solar panels four, rotors three. I think it's running, but uh oh. I'm guessing it's worked out that the current daytime is nighttime, so it's not doing anything yet. So we'll just have to wait till morning. And that means. How much power did we end up with in here? So it's got five hours while it's sitting doing nothing. But our battery has a grand total of 14 kilowatt hours. That's not a lot. <sighs> I wonder if I can do it. I was tossing up and a few people had suggested it as well. Whether having hydrogen engines and an O2H2 generator on the trailer would be an idea because I mean this is a miner so it then can collect its own fuel and power itself that way and looking at this there is an option for that it's an option that isn't ideal well there are two options and neither of them I'm super thrilled by uh, so we need O2 the first one that I'm just thinking about now is that the O2H2 generator has a large port on it if I were to remove the rotor part here and add the O2H2 generator in here, I'd then be able to have this all connected nicely, which could work. Uh, the trouble with that is obviously I can't then eject into the collector while hooked up, which isn't a huge problem, but it's not ideal. It's still something I could consider though. I would then have the option later once I've got a crane vehicle to detach this ejector bit by removing just that one piece in between and putting a piston in there because if I put a piston in there I can then extend it and adjust the distance depending on whether I'm disconnected from the trailer or attached to the trailer but because I don't have a crane or any means to detach and attach something like that I don't want to be moving that just now the other option I had with the O2H2 generator is to slap it somewhere on the side here, which is going to look really ugly. And I know that shouldn't matter for a, for a functional vehicle, but this is me <laughs> and it does. And unfortunately, I don't think we can manage to fit it somewhere in between these wheels. I think it'll end up being in the way. So I guess, I guess the best option is to put it at the front here. Then, because the hydrogen engines are a bit smaller, I could put an engine, well, I could put an engine on each side here, or maybe I could pop them out the sides, off each side here, and then that'd give me a mounting point for a couple of piston legs to stand this thing up on. It'll make it a bit broad at the, f oh no, I can't do that because I'll have to eject onto the side. If I put it here, I won't be able to get those ejectors onto the top of the collector, so that'll cause me issues. So I'll need to put this somewhere back here. And I think that means 
having it oriented that way. And since we're going to have quite a lot of weight off the front here with the O2H2 gen, possibly having the hydrogen engine back here would make some sense so that we've got a little bit of counterbalance. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is, I think that's going to be the best way to go. If we can get this up and running, I will feel safe enough to drive with what little power I have remaining and go and collect some ice over by the mountain. Because I don't want to ruin the surface here until the drones do. Because <laughs> undoubtedly crashing, crashing drones will do that later to me. Alright, I turned a whole bunch of things off. That can stay off. These need to go on. And now I can detach. Let's move out of the way. Try not to crash into the important battery on my survival kit. Suddenly realize that I should have... Uh, moved the trailer first. I wonder if I can shove it a bit. Yeah. Oh, not too far. Not too far. Stop, stop, stop. Good. Because <laughs> it was going to get difficult to get back into this space. Because <laughs> I was pretty tight squeeze there. Alright, O2H2 gen. Let's do you in red. Pop it there. Then a rotor part in the middle. Then I think I might have enough materials to make one hydrogen engine. So I'll put one on one side. I'll place the block on the other side, but I'm not going to build it just yet. What my hope is, eventually, instead of having the hydrogen engines running all the time to power the batteries, the batteries should get up close to full charge. And that will then mean that these hydrogen engines can fill with fuel or my power output will be low enough that they can accumulate fuel while the O2H2 gen runs to fill them. And that'll give me a nice bit of safety fuel and safety power. I'm not a huge user of hydrogen engines in general, and it's largely because my experience with them when I first started using them was uh, nightmarish. But they definitely, there is a little niche they can fill. If you're on an ice lake, they're awesome because you've got heaps of fuel available to you. Snow's not so great because snow doesn't produce you quite so much hydrogen or at least quite so much ice per unit of volume that you mine out. One thing I am really disappointed in is that I had to place these with the flat surface down. I really wanted the flat surface up, but then it wouldn't have piped properly, which is disappointing. Let's see if I've got enough for this. I possibly shouldn't use it, but I kind of want to. All right, we are going to be running low, but with these on the mining trailer thing, I should feel safe enough to drive over to the cliff and get some stone. I'm well aware that the O2H2 gen can't produce enough hydrogen for both of these engines to run at max efficiency. However, as I was mentioning before, what I'm hoping is that the hydrogen engines don't need to output their maximum power, which means they won't use up the fuel as quickly as this can generate it and for the purpose of symmetry and balance in terms of weight I wanted to have one on both sides and also the additional fuel reserve that that will give me by having some in each tank because these things hold 16,000 liters of hydrogen so hopefully that'll all work all right let's get some water before I leave since I don't want to repeat my efforts of last time and almost starving and dying of dehydration on return from my journey. What I'm probably smartest doing here oh, is putting a light on the back of this thing. Oh, oh, oh. Nope. Bad, 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 bad. There we go. Connected. <laughs> I was just having to spam the keys. Okay. Lights on. Good. Now I've got a bit of situational awareness and let's drive without using the rear wheels, I think. So I think once I get over there, I'll mine a bit of ice by hand and try and get the power situation a little less dire. As I would rather not have to walk all the way back from where I'm going. So what I was thinking was I wanted to have a mine separate to the base. I didn't want to dig underneath my base too much. And I certainly didn't want to make any divots in the surface. I wanted to keep things relatively pristine around the base. At least, well, until as I said earlier, the drones come along and ruin it all for me. So to do that, 
if I build a mine over here and have some sort of nice little entryway and build some large caverns inside, I could even move my survival kit in there to keep it safe later on, which would be kind of nice and a nice way to have it underground, but not as part of my base. That's kind of where my head's at. But what I need to do first, once I get a little bit more power on this thing and can take some stone back home, is to build a collector, a cargo container, and a turbine so that it's got power, and then have a hand mine, a hand mineable setup, or even later, use the ejectors on the back of this to go straight into that collector so that I can then just fill it up and really be able to mine without having to worry about the power on this was what I was thinking but maybe I won't need to do that now that I've got the hydrogen engine running we'll see that was my thought before I decided to put the hydrogen on engine on first was that make a nice hand drillable mine shaft but it might not be necessary now I may be able to just drill straight with the vehicle so we got 1400 ice engines it is outputting okay it's outputting 500 kilowatts but that's because the batteries are on if i turn these off how much is it outputting now ah they it's filling can i fill both yes cool because they're not outputting enough so my my plan works i'll be able to get 16,000 liters in sweet I don't know how much... Yeah, the power calculation with the engines is just totally broken. But this works! Ha 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 ha! That's what I was hoping for. Only 80 kilowatts out from each, so 160 kilowatts. What I might do... For now is... Maybe... <sighs> maybe I'll just turn on the battery on the front bit get it a bit of charge because that's the vehicle that separates those little batteries don't really need to get any charge hmm I was just thinking maybe I don't need to hand mine actually if I keep the sorter and ejector off I should be able to mine with the drill using the power from the engines if I stay attached and that way all I'll need to do is transfer the ice myself by hand instead of having to mine this all by hand how's our battery looking we had like 10 kilowatts left. Okay. That's substantially better. I mean, it's going to take an age for it to recharge, but it's still a whole lot better than it was. Don't know that this is any quicker. <laughs> Not being able to tilt means I can't really dig in properly. Although if I start further down the hill, it might work a bit better because I'll be able to dig a little bit of a divot in and then I'll start kind of mining into a bit of mining a little bit deeper as I go further up the hill well I think this is going to be my night <laughs> it's going to be collecting ice to try and get this thing powered up so I can go and do another iron run so we're looking here we've got 6,000 ice 7,000 ice I should run the generator the engines for a little while I suppose I could collect a little bit of stone and then head back and wait for the engines to run out and then see where I'm at. The other thing I need to do for this little rover here is I really need to get some get a timer block on it so I've got a docking timer. The reason I want a docking timer is eventually that timer instead of a group will be used to lock and unlock the connector so I can have lock and unlock connector while I have switch on and switch off other blocks. And what I haven't done in the past but is probably good practice is to have a lock and an unlock timer block the reason for that is if a block ever gets toggled manually if you forget that it's part of your timer group it'll then get switched in its state when you go to lock when you really want it to be turned off so if you have two separate timer blocks you can have a toggle off and a toggle on that way that means that they'll always end up in the correct state when you hit that timer and you'll know what state all of your various bits and pieces are going to be in so there is a definite advantage to doubling up on your timer blocks for that sort of thing the twisting at the front is really disconcerting 
Because I keep thinking that I'm about to tip over, but it's actually just the front half tipping, not the back. So it's not as bad as it looks. It's because I've got that rotor in the middle free spinning. Oh, before I leave, I should make a GPS marker here. Mining site. That way I know where I need to come back to next time I want to dig. So I'm only digging in one spot. Okay, got a little bit more capacity, but not much. It's basically when this is full this time, we're full. And I'll need to just head back on home. Let's proper load up. No point doing this by half. Ooh, okay. Trailer is full. I am full. Let's do a little bit of a spin with the drill. I'm gonna guess. In a second, the drill's gonna be full. Okay. I think this did pretty well. Got a full load of ice and stone. Hopefully that'll be enough for us to perhaps build a couple more things back at the base. Whew. She is heavy. That's another reason not to mine too much around my home base, is that I am going to be using a lot of wheeled vehicles, so the fewer potholes I generate, the better, I'd say. Oh, oh, come on. I think I've got more power available, but I've turned it down on the rear wheels just to make it all behave a little bit more nicely. May have to check in a second, because I am really struggling to get up hills. Yep, let's go see. Wheels. Trailer wheels. Yeah, let's give it some more power. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't do it with much trouble at all. I think the reason I didn't do that was I just didn't want it using two... It must have been a power situation or something. I don't really recall now. <sighs> Quite happy with how these engines have turned out on this, actually. And realizing that I had the large connector thanks to the collector is quite good too. And another thing that quite a few people mentioned that I think is a good idea and will look even better with how I've now set this up was to put a bit of a funnel around the collector. Just an extra thing to help ensure that the rocks go where I want them to go. Just have a little bit more leeway to get things right. And I need some reversing lights because I cannot see much at all. I will almost certainly in post add a bit of extra brightness here so you guys can see, but I really can't see much. All right, we are here. How is our battery going? I should have done that before I got out. 63 kilowatt hours. Nice. Maybe I can set that to recharge. Now we can collect our stone, get it fine and get a little bit more resources. All right, that's all our stone processed. Let's pop this in the assembler. One of the really common suggestions I got at the end of the last video was to build some sort of lifting vehicle, something that can take me up to the heights I need to be at to weld stuff like this wall without having to build any scaffolding. And do you know what? The reason <laughs> I decided to play without jetpacks was because I wanted to build one of those and I wanted it to feel legitimate because it wasn't just me building it for the sake of building it because my jetpack would have done the job better anyway. And that's kind of why I nerfed the jetpack because I really wanted to build one of them. So I completely agree with every single person who suggested that. Yes, I will build one. I might build something overly complicated uh, just for the fun of it. I've... <sighs> <laughs> Over on my Twitch channel where I occasionally stream, I did build a scissor lifter in creative and it works. It's a bit clangy. I'll have to fiddle with rotor offsets to make sure it works properly, but it works. It will be able to lift me up high enough to weld all the stuff around on these walls. What I may do prior to building something that complex is build something smaller. Build something that might be a little more mobile and a little bit able a little bit better able to get into smaller areas. Uh, it, pro it won't be able to reach as high as that, but the idea would be if I can get something that instead of me just barely being able to reach two blocks up, or the second block up from the ground, if I can reach the third 
maybe the fourth, but at least the third, if I can get another two and a half to three meters upwards, that's still going to save me a lot on scaffolding. And that's coming in my direction. That's not good. All right, I'm taking the truck and I am getting out of here because that won't spawn drones if I am not here. Uh, on, on, on. Pike and break off. Let's... Whoa. All oh, right, my battery's on recharge. I gotta just go. Oh, no, 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 no. Battery, 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 battery. Auto. Trees. I gotta go. Gotta get out of here. Uh, I need to run away and off to one side so that I get away from its path. I know it moves at 30 meters a second, so I've got to get quickly out of its way. Because if a drone comes out from it, I am in so much trouble. I know my turrets might be able to handle it, but if I can stop the drone altogether, then that's much better. So if I go this way, which way is it coming? Okay, if I keep going to the right, I want to hug to the right of the valley. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm so glad I charged this thing up. Because if I hadn't, there was no way I would have been able to run up. Oh, no, bad. Bad, bad. I'm at a dead end. I may have to just face this thing if it spawns any drones. way. Which way is it going? <sighs> Come on, keep, keep, let's see if I can get any further away. I don't know how close it can get before it spawns drones. I deliberately made the distances on these drones, on the um, drone spawning antennas, quite varied across the different spawns so that I wouldn't know because there is so much more fear and so much more excitement if you don't know the ins and outs at least for me I prefer that 2.05 still looking okay as long as it's a single marker we're okay 2.07 all right six bad 2.09 Okay, are we okay? Oh, come on, go past, go past. Please go past. Please, 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 please. I think we're okay. All right. <laughs> I did not get to meet a drone for the first time. <laughs> I know I've got the turrets, but I just... I want to I wanna keep them away for as long as I can. Oh, boy. I'm just going to sit here until it's comfortably far away and then I'll take a nice casual drive back home. Okay, that should be good. Whew. What did I get from home? Jeez, 2Ks. Uh, maybe I'll turn my auto detector on just in case I see something as I go. I might also turn off my rear wheels and turn off my programmable block. I'll just drive with the front ones that make it a bit safer because I can't accelerate quite so quickly. So I realized that driving away from the base, which is the only thing that had guns because I'm not carrying a gun on me still, uh, had some potential downsides. Like if I got caught, I would have had no means to defend myself against the drone. But to be honest, with a single rifle I don't and no jetpack, I don't think I had a chance of defending myself against any drone anyway. So, yes, doing that can seem rather silly, uh, but when you think about the value of my home being the only place that has anything where I can respawn and having completely untested defenses, uh, maybe, maybe it's smarter? I don't know. It worked out well in the end because I did move fast enough, but it definitely could have ended poorly and it could have ended it worse, but I thought it... I guess I thought it was worth the gamble to try and get the best outcome. Not having the jetpack really makes drones nasty. <laughs> There's so much of the way that I deal with them that is bound to using my jetpack and using 
those dodging tactics that go along with being able to fly so nimbly that it's been taken away from me and I love it. I love that I now have to think of completely new ways of handling those drones. One of the things I am almost definitely going to do is have missiles, so player made missiles. Ones that use scripts like, I think Whip's got one, Ardav's got one. There are a few different ones out there uh, that can control a player made weapon and target a flying vehicle. And I will almost certainly have a little supply of those to ensure that I can take on something like a drone from quite a long way away. And perhaps, even in the distant future, take on something like the cargo ships and bring one of them down. Because that would be quite a valuable bit of loot if I can get that far. But we're obviously talking a fair way ahead of ourselves since we don't even have our refinery connected to our assembler. Got 600 iron. Maybe I should go mine some more stone. How are we looking here? Let's get that out of there. I'll leave the food and water in there. In fact, I should probably turn on or start producing more food and water. Oh, I am. Oh, <laughs> the unknown signal is somewhat tempting. A little bit of material, a little bit of varied material. Oh no, no, that's a sparrow incoming. That drone is incoming. Oh, this is bad. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Why, you evil ship? Why? Oh, and why don't I have the bullet trails mod on? So that I can see what's happening. Oh, I think the sparrow's going down. Oh yeah, it has hit the ground hard. Oh no, this thing's gonna get in range of my turrets. Maybe? Oh, 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 it is. I wonder if that'll bring it down. No, did not get enough shots off on it. Okay, hopefully since that's a fairly well, my threat level is pretty low, so hopefully that means... Well, at least I guess my threat level is low. Hopefully we don't get a second drone coming after us. I might see if I can find that one that crashed. There might be some good stuff on it. The one that we shot down. Come on. I don't want to leave before it goes away. <laughs> ah! I was not anticipating combat tonight! I'm so glad I built those turrets. There we go. Out of range, out of sight, out of mind. Let's go see if we can find that drone, or what's left of it. Now I did test all of the drones on this high gravity world, so they should, at least from my testing, they seemed to work normally. Which hopefully means that that one didn't just crash out of the sky due to bad drone behaviours, but actually- Oh! There it is! It is still- Whoa! It's still alive! Ow! 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 Bad! First tree! Bad! Didn't mean to do that. Come on, come on, move. No! Oh no! No! I. Uh, it got my battery. Oh, this is bad. I need to go back and get a gun. Oh, my miner! Oh. Oh, why? It's not fair. I don't have a gun on me, do I? No. Oh, oh, that's gonna be part of my miner exploding. My miner that I just put so much effort into. <sighs> Great. Just wonderful. Typical. It would be one of the drones that I put a turret on top of to prevent <laughs> flying things, so when it crashes it doesn't destroy a turret. Grr. I have no idea where my mining vehicle is at now. Possibly should have hit the handbrake before I jumped out. Is that all that's left? You are kidding me.
Come on, get the turret. Yes! I did not have much of my miner left, but... Uh... No, Goofy! Why? Oh... Ah, oh, you rotten drone! It's not fair. <sighs> that was expensive. Now the big question is, do I rebuild the Goofy as it was? I'm kind of tempted to, because <laughs> I quite liked it. I don't think I'll be able to build those blocks again. I think I'm going to have to grind them down and take the waste. But there should be enough on board this to make it so I end up a little bit better off. All right, let's stop this thing from flying. I'm just going to scrap all this and take what I can get from the scrap, I think. I still don't have any lifter vehicle or crane or anything like that, so there's not much I can do with parts from these things. <sighs> so we'll just, let's see how much I get from this. Ah, <sighs> it's going so well. Those rotten cargo ships. I can't believe it. I got away with the first one and then I got away with shooting down that drone and now, grrr. I've lost my mining vehicle, I've lost my cargo transport. Why? It's not fair. Oh. I'm going to have to basically rebuild Goofy from the ground up. Hopefully having enough materials to do so from what I can run and grab. I suppose I should be grateful that at least I didn't lose anything more valuable. Alright, let's dump all that in and see how much we get back from it. Looks like we may be okay. I can go and grab more stuff from that drone. Yeah, 457 iron. That's not bad. Not too much nickel or silicon, but we get plenty of that from the stone. So I think I'm going to hoof it and try and collect as much as I can on foot of the remains of Goofy, as well as that sparrow that I shot down. Hopefully not losing the ammo when I get to the turret, because the turret should still have ammo in it. I'm going to take an extra O2 bottle. Maybe an extra two. The scrap doesn't seem to be very large in terms of volume. So it does have at least that upside to it. And conveniently, everything is pretty much right in the direction of the mining site, since I cannot see a single thing. Why did I decide to drive straight on into the Sparrow? I should have thought that through. That was totally stupid. I should have known better than to drive straight towards an enemy vehicle that I didn't know whether it was fully disabled or not. And I'm probably going to get killed by this wheel. If I don't move out of the way. No, don't go over the edge. No. <sighs> Dang it. So again, if I had a crane, I would totally rebuild from these parts, but I don't have the materials for Crane. I don't have the materials to replace the vehicle. I just keep dropping down the hill. So I think my best plan is to collect as much of this as scrap, process it, and see what I can build from the remnants. I think I had about 4,000-ish iron when I started doing the trailer building for the Goofy. Um, and I'm definitely calling the next one the Goofy too, just because it's fun to say. <laughs> so, given, given the Goofy, the first Goofy didn't really get a second name, I, I quite like Goofy 2. Hopefully Goofy 2 will live for longer than Goofy 1. Oh, scrap metal. I want. Plus, hopefully I'll have learnt a few lessons on how to better construct the Goofy 2 to take advantage. Oh, bottle. I'll learn a few lessons about how to better construct the Goofy 2 so that it can function a bit more appropriately. So, like, instead of putting the ore detector where I did, I'll put a piston there so I've got an extra little bit of stability when I detach. And I can do things like setting up the ejector. So there are, there are improvements that can be made for the Goofy 2. Uh, I'm going to head home. Six. Five. Lights off. Four. I think I'll make it. Three. 
I'm pretty sure I'll make it. Two. Getting slightly less confident that I'm going to make it. Without getting injured at least a little bit. Alright, lights on so I can see. Oops, ran too far. Yeah, I was fine. There was nothing that was going to be a problem there. Sort of. I wonder if I could do that. Just thinking, Goofy 2. I wonder if I could use the battery that's the base battery. I suspect not. And I probably shouldn't use this one either. Since the other battery on this grid is completely dead. And it's living off just this one now. Nope. It's going to get its own fresh battery. Alright. Decision made. I was hoping I could use the base battery so that the Goofy 2 starts with a good amount of power. Rather than starting with just the 25% that it begins with. But I can definitely do some thinking on whether I could do it with 5x5 wheels and use that extra width to allow it to have a bit more stability and maybe even to allow the trailer to hold large cargo containers rather than mediums which should allow me to carry a lot more material but it's still going to be the goofy design so still the two wheel setup and I'm going to have to go back and look through the comments because someone gave me a um, a bit of a forced acronym for goofy G-U-F-I and I cannot right now remember what they made it stand for but I might go with that once I find it in the comments okay drone you evil horrible thing please give me enough materials to actually do some proper building with how devastatingly bad this went I'm just running over in my mind whether there was anything different I could have done once I started getting shot I'm not sure there was cover behind me. I was trying to get out of car out of range as quickly as possible, but I didn't because I didn't have the power on the rear wheels. I didn't have the driving force to get moving quickly enough. And then once the battery was shot, it was done. <sighs> Annoying. All right. Gee, character tools. Let's put our better grinder on that bar. Let's not worry about little pieces on the ground like that, because they're really hard to get, and we'll use up lots of power to get them. Oh, this is definitely better. And there we go. We have no more of the evil drone that destroyed the original Goofy. <sighs> Alright, looks like the solar panel is working quite nicely. From all that scrapping, managed to collect... Uh, a moderate amount of resources, not great. We're still well behind on what we had at the start of the night, which is very sad. Uh, that drone was definitely costly. But the solar panels on here, are they outputting enough that things are charging? They are. How are our batteries looking? How long will it take them to charge? 15 hours. No, that should be fine. Because the current output is low enough. Yeah, it should be fine. They, the survival pod will now gain charge thanks to the solar rotors. It looks like I should have enough materials in the assembler in order to get the Goofy 2 up and running. So, that is for next time. If you've got any ideas about the Goofy 2, things that might make it work a little bit better than the original Goofy, let me know because I think there are a few areas of improvement that we might be able to do while still sticking with that two-wheel, single-axle design. Uh, including, I'll be incorporating a piston to allow it to level itself off, even when it's not connected to the trailer. That sort of thing. So let me know. Next time, as I said, Goofy 2 is on its way. So there's all that, and plenty more to come, and I will see you then.